Hello everyone, this is Brooke and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Today I have my question and answer video. It's for September. I know I'm a little late now, but things got hectic and I just couldn't post it up before now. So even though it's October, these are my questions that I received for my September Q&A. Let me know how you feel about me doing these a little bit more often because I find that I get way too many questions now for one video and I hate to cut anyone off but I also hate to make the videos way too long so let me know if you feel okay about me doing these like every other week or every three weeks um, I'd really really appreciate your feedback on that so I do have a lot of questions I'm gonna get started but before I start I'm gonna show you the mug I'm using today I might be using this one from now on it is my lovely pink to Paris mug looks like this and it features oh you can't see very well because of the lights but it features my brand new logo that I designed myself I, but like I said I have a lot of questions I'm just gonna jump right in because there's a lot <laughs> and I don't want to cut anybody off and I don't want this video to be four hours long so I'm just gonna start with video uh, questions that I received from my last Q&A video in August and the first one I got was from a lovely subscriber I have her name is shopping with a passion and I love that name <laughs> and she writes about six months ago my rose lychee key pouch was stolen it was the first Lux gift from my guy I recently repurchased from Fashion File after looking for six months for the exact color. If you had to repurchase a luxury good due to it being lost or stolen, would you? So great question there. Um, I fortunately have never had a luxe good lost or stolen, um, which I'm sure would feel horrible, so I feel really bad that it was stolen, but I'm glad that you were able to replace it. Um, the closest thing I've ever gotten to a Lux Good being um, stolen was actually um, selling a bag for far too low of a price and regretting it after that. And that was this bag right here that I talk about a lot. It's the Blois bag by Louis Vuitton. It has a long shoulder strap which is tucked in right now. But it was one of my first purses by Louis Vuitton and I just kind of got tired of it. And so I decided to sell it to someone I didn't know for I think $100 or something really, really cheap. And um, I regretted it later in life when I became a bigger Louis Vuitton collector. So I didn't um, get it stolen, but I did definitely go out and repurchase one. Um, that So I just uh, for collector's purposes and for also sentimental reasons, I just wanted it in my collection. Just to, if nothing else, look at and remember the days when I used to wear it constantly. So that's my answer to that question. Thank you so much for asking. The second question I got from my YouTube video was from Gia, and she asks, when and how did your love of Louis Vuitton begin? Well, um, I remember falling in love with Louis Vuitton back when I was a junior or senior in high school. There was a girl, it must have been senior year, because there was a girl in my class that went away on a trip to France, and she came back with a Louis Vuitton bag, and I didn't know anything about it. All I remember hearing was people saying, bzz, 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 she spent bzz, 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 amount on a bag. And you know, and I saw it, I'm like, it was cute. It was a little bag. And, and I definitely started growing an attachment to it. I was looking for other bags like that around the neighborhood. I started seeing the Louis Vuitton logo in magazines. And I just kind of got attracted to the brand. And it solidified when I was in college and about a 19 years old. There was another girl that I saw that had a Speedy 25 in monogram and I fell in love with that bag. I thought she was the coolest thing and she looked adorable with her Speedy. And so I ended up getting that bag back then. And um, I've been in love with Louis Vuitton ever since. So that's my love for Louis Vuitton. It's nothing <laughs> deep, um, but that's just how it began. Okay, the third question comes from Aisha Curry, and she asks, what's your favorite jewelry brand of all time? And thanks for asking, that's a great question, and it's a very easy one to answer. I would say right now my favorite brand is Tiffany & Co. I love Tiffany jewelry, I have quite a bit of it, and it's my favorite brand, but I just love Tiffany silver jewelry. And another question comes from, I think it's Zane B. S. or Zany B. S. Um, and she asks, or he or she asks, 
please tell me the most happiest day of your life and the most regretful luxury purchase. Well, oh gosh, the happiest days of my life, well I have three. The day I married Brett and the day that each of my boys was born. And I would never, never for anything uh, have that memory taken away from me. Um, that was just so, so wonderful. And I uh, talk about luxury, being able to give birth to two perfect kids, nothing is better than that. So um, I really, really am blessed. And I'm just, now you, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking of just how much of a blessing that is. And all this other stuff really doesn't matter much you don't have the things in life that truly do matter so in addition to the question by Zany B I would say the most regretful luxury purchase that I've ever had was probably this scarf by Burberry um, there's nothing wrong with it the only thing that I don't like is it as much more purple than it did look in the website um, I, it's pro you know it's looking yeah it's still looking a little lavender here when you hold it up to the pink and you know I wear straight pink and so this lavender it's really been hard to put in my wardrobe and wear with different things I have been able to pull it off but I definitely do want a new Burberry scarf that's fuchsia a real pink so that um, I don't have to wear this one and this like I said is probably my most regrettable luxury purchase so thanks a lot for asking let's go on um, last August I got a couple extra Instagram questions that I wasn't able to answer last month so let's take care of those now the first one comes from Sonmi999 and that person asks well says hi Brooke hello what is your favorite never full print and why also would you ever consider buying a never full GM or do you feel the MM for perfectly meets your expectations. Okay, well, as far as the first question, um, my favorite never full print. Well, my favorite print of all time is the monogram. I absolutely love the monogram print. It's what I first fell in love with, and I think I always will be. And this is my never full MM. It's got the rose ballerine lining, so you can see the pink in there representing my favorite color. But uh, the monogram, MM is my favorite bag and would I go to the GM probably not because this holds a lot I can't think of anything else I've and I filled this sucker to the brim I can't think of anything else I would need to take with me um, that it couldn't fit and that I could carry because it gets very heavy when you put a lot of stuff in there and also I'm kind of petite I'm I'm curvy but I'm only five foot three and so I think this MM size fits my body perfectly and I think the GM would just look a little bit out of place with me uh, especially given my lifestyle and not needing a bigger bag so definitely on board with the monogram and with the MM size okay I got another question here from LV underscore Miller 67 underscore law and she says hi Brooke Hi, <laughs> I keep wanting to read and get into the question, but I'm going to say hi. Um, first, let me say I like your videos. Thank you very much. My question is, what does your hubby think of you purchasing all these luxe items and handbags? My fiance came, came over to my house, walked into my closet and said, wow, I didn't think you had that many bags. He looked like he was going to pass out and she writes, LOL. Um, well, my husband doesn't really kind of know or pay attention to how many bags I have even though they're displayed all around our room um, I take that back actually there was a, something came up where he was like you should do something with your bags and I'm like well I don't have that many bags and he's like starts to count he was like one two three four five and I'm just like oh my gosh I don't want first of all I don't want him to know how many bags I have and then second I didn't realize I had that many bags so he could care less still now that he knows and he probably forgot the number that he counted and I am happy about that because I don't want him knowing my bag situation <laughs> um, but at the same time it's 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 good to it's a good amount I think <laughs> and and like I said he doesn't mind and then she asks also what nationality are you and she says I am Haitian Cuban 
Okay, well, I'm American, completely from the United States. I have African American and American Indian descent, and that's pretty much all I know about my ethnicity, and my nationality is obviously American. Okay, and then from Facebook, I got a few questions, and one comes from Trisha Mariana Corso. Well, actually, she asked two questions, and the first question is, what made you love doing YouTube videos? And how long have you been married? Well, the thing that made me love you doing YouTube videos is all of you. The people that watch my videos, that comment, leave great feedback, positive remarks, follow me on my social media, interact with me there. Um, I've developed several really good friends, um, some even I feel like they're sisters to me, that have come purely because I decided to turn on the camera and do some YouTube. Um, I feel like I'm very fortunate in that regard and that I would not have been able to meet some of these great people unless I put myself out there. So that's what I really love about YouTube. Um, another thing about me is I'm not competitive. No, I'm not competitive, but I'm very achievement oriented. So I love to set markers for myself and surpass those. And YouTube, you know, silly as it may sound, gives me something to, to shoot for and surpass. So when it comes to subscriber numbers or viewer numbers or things like that or how many videos I'm going to make in a month or anything like that, I like to be able to um, quantify my efforts and then also see where I have grown or not grown and need to improve. So that's what I really love about YouTube. And your next question is, oh, how long have you been married? Well, in two days, I will be married to Brett for 19 years. We were married on October 4th. And like I said, 19 years on Tuesday. Um, looking forward to 20 because, I don't know, I think I should get something big for that. <laughs> but it's been a wonderful ride and I look forward to 19 more. And thank you so much for that question. Okay, so those were all the questions that I wrote down that came from other spots. Now I'm gonna take a sip of my it's not tea, I can't even fake it. It's um, flavored water. <laughs> I take water and I add flavor enhancers. Have you seen those in the drugstore? I love strawberry kiwi. And so I put that in my water. And I need to take a sip or two because I'm talking a lot. Now for the questions that came on my recent Instagram post that I put up a week or so ago asking for questions. The first one comes from Miss Jasmine Hopkins. Hello, and she says, Kat Von D has landed in the UK in one of our department stores. What products would you recommend for a first time buyer? Also, I still adore your videos every day after university. It's my little treat after a hard day. Oh, thank you so much. That really makes my day to know that I am there for you. Um, I watch other YouTubers too in the same way as a little treat for myself, so I'm glad to know that I'm able to do that for you. But Kat Von D, I pulled a few things from my collection that I think you must try. If you like full coverage foundation, definitely try the Locket Foundation by Kat Von D. It's really good. It's a nice skin-like finish, which is on the matte side, and it's full coverage, so you don't have to play around with lots of layers. The other thing that I really, really love from Kat Von D is the tattoo liner. It is like the felt tip pen, black eyeliner in the color Trooper. It lasts for a very long time and the tip stays very precise and you can get a really good wing if you want to that look. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was her Metal Crust eyeshadows. Um, I have the color Thunderstruck which is if you're able to get a hold of that one, definitely do it. And I also have the color Synergy, which looks like this. It's a brown, nice matte, no, metallic brown. Sorry, there's nothing matte about this. They're metallic shades. But let me show you Thunderstruck really quick. It's extremely creamy, but it's a gorgeous, I got swatches on my hand, but it's a gorgeous highlight. And also, I use it for brow bone highlight and also sometimes for my cheek highlight. So play around with those things. I think you will like them. The next question comes from Frozen Luxury. Hi, Saya, how are you? I call him Boo, so hey Boo, how you doing? 
And he asked, what is your all-time favorite and least favorite bag? Well, I've already shown them already. My all-time, and I think you mean in my personal collection, um, out there in the world, I couldn't even give you a, a, a clue because there are just so many bags out there. I, I'm really picky when it comes to my bags. I like this, I don't like that, uh, it goes on and on. But in my own personal collection, my favorite bag is my Neverfull MM. I it just it's a workhorse it's a great bag it does everything I need a bag to do and more so this is my favorite bag and then my worst bag or the my least favorite bag in my collection is this blah bag um, and the only reason I have it is because I regretted selling it back in the day so badly that I wanted it back in my collection so that it was more for nostalgia and sentimental reasons that I have it it's definitely not a bag that I like or would carry on my person now um, but it's so well made. It's so um, um, representative of the era that I bought it in. And then I, when I did wear this bag, I wore it every day for a good two, three years straight. And it just brings back so many good memories for me. But least favorite bag to wear, but I have it for other reasons. So thank you for the question. The next question comes from Lori Hart's Makeup. And she says, as an everyday bag, do you prefer the Neverfull or the Speedy? And which do you find more comfortable? Love your videos so much. Thank you very much. I see you commenting on my videos a lot and I really do appreciate that. But as far as your question goes, do I prefer the Neverfull or the Speedy? Me, I prefer, I love them both. Love them both. But I prefer the Neverfull. It is much more comfortable to me to have something that I can throw over my shoulder and after time, you know, I can use both hands and it just kind of, this shoulder and I switch a shoulder to make it you know balance out but the speedy is beautiful it's gorgeous and I love that bag but it is a little uncomfortable to only carry it on the crook of your arm or to hand hold it um, so that's just my answer for that the next question comes from TV lucky and she says or yeah she says you mentioned in your last Q&A video that your career is in HR how can someone with no experience get into that field I'm a few classes away from getting my MBA, but I can't seem to get recruiters to notice me. I'm guessing I don't have the experience. Thanks. Um, that is a big deal in human resources. Um, experience is key because there's a lot of competition in the field. It's getting more so as time goes by. I'll just let you know how I started, and that is by recruiting. I um, started off in human resources as a recruiter, so it's a lot easier to get your foot in the door as a recruiter than it is as a generalist or a other kind of professional. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, because these days, I think it's because these days companies are doing a lot of recruiting, and that's something that's specialized, that people can focus on. I liked recruiting because I still learned a lot about HR while I was doing it. You learn how to do customer service, how to interact with managers, and you also learn a ton about um, project management and employment law. So look at two companies that are hiring recruiters. That might be a great entry point into human resources for you. Hope that helps. The next question comes from Instagram and it is from a user named Cityscaping. And she asks, Three questions actually one how do you have you been able to remain poised and positive while raising two boys working full-time and maintaining your marriage the second question is what are typical outfits that you might wear to work in a week and the third question is what type of champagne wine and liquor do you prefer okay well first question I don't know how I'm able to remain poised. Well, just to let you know that you're seeing a side of me that I want you to see. Um, YouTube is, is a great hobby of mine. I definitely try to be as real as possible. Like if I'm having a bad day, you'll probably be able to tell, especially if you follow me on Snapchat or Twitter or my Facebook page, really let you know what's going on. And you know, a lot of days I'm just have no energy. I'm no makeup. Amazon, just whatever. I keep it real. But as far as keeping it poised and keeping it together, you know, I just know what needs to be done and I do it. Just, there's no excuses allowed. There's no um, backups. There's no whatever. You just know what needs to be done and do it. And that means dedicating time to my family, to my career, and to myself. So 
that's the question or that's the answer to the first question second is what typical oh, typical outfits that I wear to work this time of year a typical outfit for me is a pencil skirt preferably a knit pencil skirt a pair of pumps a t-shirt and a cardigan so like a nice t-shirt not like a raggedy old graphic t-shirt or anything like that but a nice plain t-shirt like a v-neck and then a cardigan with a knit pencil skirt and a pair of pumps or boots that's what I love to wear around this time of year to work and the third one is what type of champagne wine and liquor do you prefer well I'm not really that knowledgeable about drinks but I will drink whatever champagne is offered to me I love Cabernet Sauvignon wine. That's my favorite. It's a red wine. I love it. It's my favorite. And liquor. I don't know about liquor, but I do love uh, Cosmopolitans, Cosmos. Um, that's my favorite mixed drink. So I hope that answers the question. Um, and when is happy hour? <laughs> okay, and then I have a question from Marissa862. She asks, can you introduce us to your cat? I'm a pet person and would love to know more about him or her. Your videos always make my day. Thank you, Marissa. Okay, um, I have a special guest here. Come on. So this is my cat, Foster. He is a beautiful, sweet child of mine. And he is about 13 pounds, so he's not light here. And he is about 10 years old. And there's a long story how we got him. He was a stray cat that my neighbor found in January, which is you know br brutally cold here. And she came over one day and she asked if I could put something in my basement for one night. And I'm like, sure. And she brought over a cat and I'm like, ah, no. Um, but she brought him over. She said she had a lot of cat foster homes that he could go to and she would just have to call and make a few phone calls and, and he could be placed in a foster home and then I would be done rescuing him for the night well a week a month several months later he's still with us we decided to keep him and we named him foster and he has been the sweetest little loving addition to our family love him very much he's a perfect little cat and he's sweet and snuggly and we all love him so this is foster say hello foster so, he's been in some vlogs before, but this is his first filming setup location video. So, okay, and my lovely assistant will come and rescue him from me. You all remember Mason? There he goes. Bye, Foster. Okay, the next question comes from Clutter Exchange. How long does your morning makeup routine take you? And do the products you use last a full day? Thanks, your makeup always looks awesome. Well, thank you very much. Um, my typical workday morning routine doesn't take that long. I don't usually do a full, full face. I usually just do a powder foundation that I put on really quick, a blush, highlighter, eyeliner, do my brows, lipstick, and I'm out the door. So it really takes like 15 minutes and um, yeah, 15 minutes at the most, but on a full glam day like I'm getting ready to film, that might take me closer to an hour because I really take my time. I like to be extremely precise, and I just love to play with makeup, so I do a little bit more here, a little extra touch there, and it just takes a long time to get ready. So when I you see me on camera, I've put a little bit extra time into the way I look, which I think I should because I'm putting myself out there. I don't want to look like a, you know, bum or anything. So that's that. And let's see here. The next question comes from Z Heart M. And she asks, would you ever get a weave? I think you'll look great with extensions. And now I do have to admit that it took me a little, I had to do a little research to find out what the difference was between a weave and extensions. And I don't think there really is one. But I put on Snapchat last week um, the fact that I was thinking about getting a wig or trying a wig. Um, just to have something different, something to play around with. And a lot of people said, yeah, go for it, try it. And then some people said, no, we want you the same way, the way that you are naturally. So I haven't really decided yet. Um, the thought of doing something to make hair care even easier is extremely appealing because playing around and doing my hair is not the most fun or interesting thing in the world to me. 
Um, but I do it. I try to do a good job. But there are days where I would just love to put on some other hair <laughs> and walk out the door. So you never know. Um, let me know what you think about me and extensions or a weave or a wig or anything like that. Okay, next question comes from Sapphire Jim. And she asks, do you foresee yourself getting an Epi or Emprunt bag or SLG in the near future? If so, which ones? Um, bag or SLG. I have an Epi belt and I have an Epi clutch bag, the Sobe clutch. Um, not really interested in too much else in the Epi line right now. The Emprunt line, maybe more so with that. Um, maybe try out an SLG like a clay or but see uh, I'm I'm really practical well I'm I say I'm practical but you know you could look at all the mini bags I have and differ with me um, but I already have a clay I have a monogram clay so I really don't know if I need another clay um, or a small wallet or anything um, but if something came out that was emprunt like a belt or uh, an SLG, I definitely probably would go with that one a lot quicker than I would with the another Epi print. Hopefully that answers your question. I really haven't given it much thought. I'm usually uh, a sucker for the canvas brands or the canvas prints. I love the monogram Damier Azure and Damier Aben um, that I really haven't thought about um, Epi or Emprunt too much. So maybe I will <laughs> now that you've given me that thought in my head. Okay, the next question comes from Just Chris 43 and she asks, what skincare products are you using now? Cleanser, moisturizer, toner, dot, 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 dot. Well, I do owe you guys a skincare routine video. I'm just trying to get things together for what I do in the fall. But there's three products I want to point out that I really do love using. And um, one is my e.l.f. Makeup Cleaning Wipes. Um, I just love these. They're so dirt cheap and they're very effective for me. They don't cause any breakouts. They don't leave residue, anything like that. So I love these. Another thing that I've been using is the Estee Lauder Nutritious um, Cleanser. It is called the Radiant Vitality 2-in-1 Foam Cleanser. It is a great cleanser. It's got a really pleasant smell very rosy florally smell to it and it definitely does lather up and leave my skin really soft and clean so I love that and the third thing I want to show you is the Glam Glow uh, purifying super mud Glam Glow super mud looks like I don't know if it's gonna show you because of the lights looks like that and I really do love this as far as a treatment mask um, but I have several masks I have several cleansers <laughs> I have several everything in skincare I just need to narrow it down to what my favorites are and give you a video on my skincare routine so but thanks for the question uh, the next question comes from a blooming blog and she says hi Brooke what is your favorite video to do I love your outfit ones also what is your favorite makeup brand and she her name is Cassandra D thank you very much um, for watching my outfit videos as far as my favorite video to do, hmm, I really like all of them. There's not too much I don't like doing. Um, what's really hard to do are makeup tutorials, and I don't really do those so much anymore because they get really low views for some reason. Um, maybe because people don't like the way I'm doing it. But also, I really do love doing the outfit videos. They don't get the, the highest views either. But I just love doing it and I get so much positive feedback when I do that that it really feels good and it really feels like I'm putting out something good into the world and helping people and just entertaining people if nothing else. Um, so I really like that. I love doing these Q&As. I could just sit and chit chat with you guys all day long if you let me. Um, so I really, really have a lot of videos that I love doing, obviously, because I keep doing them. Um, and the other question is, what is my favorite makeup brand? You know, that's again like asking me to pick my favorite child. <laughs> I love so many makeup brands. Um, I have a ton of Too Faced though. Too Faced and Urban Decay might be the two favorites because if I look at my collection, that's what is the majority of my makeup is Too Faced and Urban Decay, I believe. So, and those are really, really good brands. So, thanks for the question. An Instagram user by the name of Call Jam 4 asks, who does the cooking at your house? 
Um, not me, <laughs> really. Um, you know, my mom is living with us now and she does a lot of cooking for dinners. Brett also does some dinners on the weekend. Um, that's pretty much all we have to worry about because, you know, school and lunch and work and lunch, everything is, you know, rushed off to somewhere else and breakfast is every, every man for themselves. But as far as dinner goes, mostly my mom does those and then Brett does. And then if those two are out of the picture, then it comes to me, which is hopefully not very often. The next question comes from Ivanka5339. And she says, hi, Brooke. Hi. I love your style and I look forward to your videos very much, especially the outfits. My question is, have you ever been to Prague? No, I haven't. I would love to go there. I would love to go all over Europe. So maybe someday I'll see you there. And she says, greetings from the Czech Republic. And then she has a emoji with two hearts in the eyes. I don't know what you call that. And Ivana. So thank you very much. And thanks for the invitation. I would love to go someday. Um, one more question. The last one. And this comes from Sonmi999. And she says, Hi, Brooke. If you didn't work with what you do, what field of work would you choose instead? And that is a very good question to end with because it's extremely thought provoking. I'm not quite sure what I would do. Um, I do like to, I have a, I'm pretty good at writing and I do have a interest in it. I would probably do some more writing, like blogging. And I'm really, really interested in restarting my blog again at pinktoparis.com. So be looking for that someday. Um, I'm gonna start posting, posting little articles things that inspire me so I'll let you know when that's ready to go um, otherwise I would do something in the fashion or beauty industry um, maybe I can be a beauty fashion blogger <laughs> or something I would love to do something that required travel because I love to travel I'm not really sure I'm just trying to put my mind around there's always something out there for whatever you're interested in all you have to do is just dream it up and it, you can make it happen. But um, I don't know if I wasn't in human resources right now, I would definitely be doing something more along the lines with beauty, fashion, and also writing. And maybe even I would do YouTubes. So thanks a lot for that question. And thank you all of you for your questions this time around. We got a lot of them and I really, really do appreciate that. Like I said, I feel like I'm chit chatting with you when I do these videos and I definitely feel like I could you know, if my voice would carry out, I definitely feel like I could do these for a very long time. I love getting to know you. I love you getting to know me. So write down something about yourself in the comments down below so I can get to know you a little bit because you might not think this, but I do recognize your names. If you comment on my videos um, more than once, I do recognize your name and I look forward to hearing from you each time. And um, so let me know something about yourself and I would love to read that and also, if you have any requests for videos and let me know if you what you think about me doing these more often than once a month um, anything else no that's about it <laughs> oh like this video if you did like it give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel I would really appreciate it I really am trying to grow my channel to be about 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year I know it sounds big but I think we can do it but anyway I love you guys so much I thank you so much for the questions and for letting me come on here and for listening to me so thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.